Mark McSharry, Brexit, the fallout and the recriminations. Day two of this summit in Brussels. Uh, is it big picture stuff that's being discussed out there or are we into the minutiae of how Ireland is or, 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 or won't be affected by Brexit? I don't think we're anywhere near that at the moment. Uh, and I think it's all very much going around in circle for the last week or two about uh, big picture stuff. I think there are literally millions of things to be discussed. And uh, I myself call for the establishment of an all-party committee here uh, that would prioritise and agree Ireland's objectives in any negotiations going forward. Because I think as with other issues such as the bank inquiry, it is possible for people to work together. And there was never an issue more important in terms of our relationship with the North, in terms of the importance of our trade, uh, and the many other issues that directly affect uh, the people here in Ireland. And, and on that, Martina Fitzgerald, we heard Charlie She's Flanagan. making any special pleadings on behalf of the citizens of Northern Ireland who, like Scotland, voted overwhelmingly to, to, to remain within the Union? Well, presumably the government there, and we've heard Martin McGuinness uh, uh, dealing with this issue. I mean, they, I would imagine, would take a very similar line. I mean, they want to stay within the EU uh, and uh, the Irish position, and that's the reason I think as parliamentarians we need to get together here, agree our objectives, to see how we can help uh, them assist in, 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 in that process, because I think it's vitally important. It's not just the retailers on the border counties where I'd be familiar with myself. It's a billion and week in trade, which has already had effects in terms of uh, the volatility of, of, uh, uh, of currency. Uh, but there are many more issues that need to be considered. And I think uh, this is far too big just to be left to diplomats or civil servants in various countries. And I think that uh, the people need to be central to these negotiations. And I think that that's best done through parliamentarians here in Ireland, getting to a committee, agreeing our position, uh, and going forcibly after those objectives. You've made that request known, have you? What kind of a response have you received? Uh, I made it known, but I'm not on the editorial staff in RTE, so <laughs> perhaps it wasn't covered here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure whether it is, or but, whether, whether um, it was or whether it uh, wasn't. But certainly <laughs> we'll be pursuing that. Uh, we called for it uh, on Monday morning, uh, and certainly we'll be continuing to pursue that, because we think it certainly is necessary. Okay. Your position on this, Mark McSherry? Well, I mean, the Public Service Pay Commission is mentioned in the programme for government, and we'd like to see that put in place and a chairman appointed as a matter of urgency. You've mentioned there the, the low pay, where teachers and guards, uh, people you know, at the top of their game mm -hmm. uh, are struggling to pay their mortgages and meet household bills. I mean, a new guard is being paid up to 40% less than the average industrial wage. And we see the kind of violent lives that they have to leave or protect sure. us all from at the okay, moment. OK, but deal with, with what happens between now and Friday. Between now and Friday, clearly. I mean, uh, you know, we would call on the minister at this late stage uh, you know, to try and engage uh, and find some solution. Because, but should I mean, those I don't increments think it's be frozen for those that uh, haven't I, signed I, up to I, the I don't deal, think Mark it's I would prefer if it wasn't. I would prefer if it wasn't on a personal level. I think that uh, uh, I think we're, 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 we're getting into multiple-tier uh, pay systems uh, and conditions now, and I think that while there are outstanding grievances, as Martina has so, said, I think we should seek over the coming days to try and resolve them. But, so, Fianna Fáil, just to be clear, Fianna Fáil's position is don't alienate those that haven't signed up to Lansdowne. Many would say that that's kind of a populist approach. No, no, well, at the end of the day, politicians have to deal with what practically are the realities on the ground. Uh, and we have young teachers in young Gardaí who are struggling to pay household bills. And we have so, 300,000 other uh, public yeah. servants who it's certainly not our, our have signed up to it's, this it's deal. It's certainly not our uh, perspective to try and in any way alienate those people or in any way penalise those right. people, but we have outstanding issues that have to be dealt with. So right. the minister uh, needs to do something, if at all possible, in the next 48 hours. And I suppose, would. Mark McSherry, they need to be brought into mainstream funding we have this kind of hodgepodge approach uh, at the moment where we have a mixture of public and, and private funding, but all of these schemes need to be looked at uh, individually and brought under mainstream funding. Yeah, there's a huge amount of people um, with disabilities throughout this country who have a, a, a great many qualifications. It could be a real asset, but without certain supports provided from the government, we had a presentation recently from people with spinal injuries, for example. There are 1,800 of them in the country, many of them with degrees, fourth, fifth level education, and 74% of them are unemployed because uh, they're not being um, <coughs> recognised as having a long-term illness on one level. Uh, there is issues if, if they take up a job that they're being offered, will they lose their medical card that's been responsible for so many other supports that they require that they wouldn't be able to afford in a normal job. Um, so I think that we need to, to take a more strategic approach to how we enable the people with disabilities to source employment. It's clearly a much bigger problem than just um, walk peer in, in, in Loud, as Jerry Adams has mentioned today. Uh, but certainly it's a big issue, and, and, and that's by an injury one is just one example of it, where 74% unemployment.
Well, Janine McGrath. I'm saying that the existing contract uh, is some 44 years old. Yeah, look, certainly there is an issue with primary care nationally, and I think where he's coming from is the fact that if we're to have a solution to the long uh, waiting list that we have, the overcrowded A&Es and so on throughout the country, it's in primary care, and obviously GPs are central to that. But it's not a question of just GP care, it's a question of providing the resources to GP surgeries. Does every practice have a nurse? Are there ECG machines? Can they deal with mild trauma and injuries like that that could take pressures off? So primary care is something that needs to be looked at. Uh, and ultimately, the GPs have had a problem over the years that who do you go to when you want to talk to the GPs? They don't have a union, there's the IMO and others. So uh, clearly the minister needs to engage with GPs. Yeah. Well, uh, we know that the extra funding is there. Uh, well, extra money is there, an extra 500 million is there. I think there are going to be an awful lot of people looking for that 500 million, not least uh, the disability sector that we spoke mm -hmm. about earlier. Uh, so again, uh, a strategic approach is needed to say, look, how best can we resource primary care to take the pressure uh, off the tertiary system? Okay. Time's against us. Mark McSherry, thank you so much for joining us.